so that's kind of scary. We may need to add a little more to it. We're going to let this finish drying off, but if that's showing low when that coil's wet, it means we've got to add a little bit more for the winter charger. It's going to be low this winter. Alright, so we got us a walk-in cooler here that's not running right. Just getting here and looking at it, noticing that got the oil pretty bad off the receiver here leaking obviously. I'd say we probably are low on refrigerant, it's kind of hard to tell. She's running super hot. I was gonna say, when I first did it, it didn't show up. That's something you gotta watch out for. Is uh, too strong. You can see it just blowing it right out, so that needs to completely redone. Surprisingly, this is actually 134A. At first I didn't see the bubble. And then I came in here and started snuffing away, and then it was like, oh yeah, wham. So, yeah, she goes over 999. We're going to go ahead and scan it over for other leaks, just in case. Because so I don't want to, like I said, you don't want to just go with the first leak you find and, and then walk away from it. Next thing you know, you've got other issues. Because there's plenty of other spots in here that look like it could be leaking. Okay, so we went ahead and just got our gauges on there. We're going to go ahead and bleed out our hoses. Wait, we're clean and clear. I'm going to kick it on and see where we're at. Look how badly it's leaking around the cap. That's not good. That's probably why they hit the leak lock crap on there. It does have a packing nut there, so we might be able to close that thing off. So we'll go ahead and see. Also, while we're doing that, we'll be able to test the uh, pressure switch, make sure it cuts off. Don't want to get too crazy with it. That's great. So your low pressure switch is not good either. Nice. This is where you really get stuck in a hard place. You want to help people out, but if you want it to work right, you just got to replace what needs replaced. I'm going to have to tell them what's going on. Might be able to adjust it. Let me take a look here and see. You don't want to open that thing up while it's in a negative. If we do this quick enough, we can do it without having to uh, pull a vacuum on it. So we're going to go grab the uh, flaring tool. Okay, we're using our orbital flare tool. Same thing I use on my uh, Mitsubishi and mini splits, whatever. It's got the, got the head that sits there and spins and orbits as it does its thing. So we got our first piece in there. Went ahead and cleaned up our sight glass. It's all better looking now. I was able to clean that all out. Got her all oiled up. What I keep in here is just an old oiler and switch it to PoE. I just use this for flare joints or stuff like that. And basically got her all ready to go, cleaned it up. So just gotta finish screwing her together and get her back together and we'll uh, get this thing uh, prepped up and ready to go. I've got the compressor valved off, high side valved off. I'm going to open up the uh, low side, push back any air that might have got into this short little section. Uh, same thing here with this before I totally tie that down. I'm just going to bleed a little bit to here, a little bit to there. We'll be good to go. These little generic wrenches, they're like 10 bucks, they're made by GB. Sometimes these are actually useful to getting you into uh, tight spots where you can't get your screwdriver. I mean, I have uh, used a screwdriver for years and years, and it's not that often that I would need anything like this, but there's some times where it just makes it a little easier. I did check to make sure this was dead. Got my little volt pin there, it always comes in handy. You never know on some of these old ones, a lot of times they might break the neutral, not the hot leg. So make sure you check your voltage and make sure it's completely dead before uh, getting involved into it. And as always, this is only uh, for people that are trained properly in the field. So don't go playing in here unless you've been trained. 
Disclaimer, disclaimer. Yippee, yippee. So we got that all back in there. Got our tube on there. This is some really thick stuff, so it shouldn't vibrate. Got it spaced out, put our oil on there. So let's go ahead and get this thing uh, back up and going. That cooler is already pretty warm. So. Anything coming out here on that? Uh, not really. Gonna back that up one turn because you gotta have your high pressure fan so I can switch on there. And then uh, crank that in a turn. That should make that run. So pressures are up. Go ahead before we get too too far along and we'll make sure actually that this thing pumps down correctly. So I've got it cutting in about 25, 28 area, which is about 33 degrees. And you could get it all the way up to 38 if you wanted, but I don't like taking the chance. So we're kind of valving it off then and making sure she pumps down. Unfortunately, the control's a little faster than the gauges are. Yes, you can do it with a uh, nitrogen tank and turn it up and down, stuff like that. I just... Uh, you gotta have the right fittings and stuff ready to go, and I don't have it set up. It's actually holding down to around five, so it may actually gotten it there. Kind of a cool old fashioned looking sight glass, but if you're gonna replace that, then honestly, the oil's black, it should be replaced. There's so many things on this that should be replaced. Um, I already know that that's not going to be likely. Also, uh, this right here, if you guys get those guys that like to wrap insulation on the line, it sticks to it, it's a pain in the butt to get it off. This takes it off the heartbeat. You can buy these at Lowe's. I like it because it fits right on the uh, impact. She's running a little higher head, 100, 123 degree condensing temperature. You know, all I can do is recommend stuff, but like I said, I think they're going to want to try to keep all the costs down. And this thing is, it's uh, what we call tired. Very tired. All right, I had one little bitty leak here on top, which I tightened it up, sprayed it afterwards. I didn't pick nothing up. So you can create a leak by going too tight. So I like to go moderate. Yeah, I could have got out my torque wrench, but nobody does that usually for just normal, normal fittings. Uh, I just got a full sight glass. Uh, ended up being about three pounds, two ounces. Um, I would say it was probably a pound in there ahead of time, maybe somewhere in that ballpark. But worst case scenario, I can go 10% over three pounds for my winter charge. That should put me right in that ballpark, maybe 15%. So just got to calculate that up, and then uh, we should be probably good to go. Uh, the cooler is a little bit warm, so I don't want to get uh, too berserko. So we're going to pump it down one more time, just to make sure it can pump down, that the head pressure don't start spiking. Uh, I added about eight extra ounces to it. It's what I calculated up. So it's starting to drop there now. And then uh, once that's done, we're gonna disconnect, get all the stuff picked up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and wash this thing out. I'm gonna see where she shuts off at, uh, whether she starts rising back and forth. Plus, with that cooler being a little warmer, it is gonna rise a little bit on that suction. And it is uh, picking up a lot more. I would say the solenoids on the inside Obviously not out here, and uh, but it seems like it's holding pretty decent. 13 pounds, it's not coming on to about 25, 28 area. So it pumped down just fine. It's not like rapid cycling back and forth, which is good. All right, so go ahead and release her here. There goes the mad dash, loving. Yeah. That's the coolest thing in the world to watch that solid side glass. Nothing worse than seeing an empty one. So, go ahead and don't forget, you back that out all the way and you're going to shut down your pressure switch. Just pointers for the new guys. These are mistakes that I've made several times. Usually I catch them before I go, but I ain't going to say I've done every one of these and forgotten them, but I definitely have had my share of mistakes. Anybody that says they have it is lying. Every day we're learning. Every day we're learning something new. So, Alright, well, time to wash this thing out and uh, go inside and double check the inside for any leaks. Any large leaks, I should say. 
Okay, I always like to make sure those forks got all the way in there and then double check those fuses to make sure they're the right ratings. So we got that back in there. We got our washed out. That made a little bit of difference, I bet. It uh, wasn't horrid, but uh, you can definitely see through it now a lot better. Probably wouldn't hurt if it had a uh, little piece of cardboard across the top, which might build them one real quick. Clean that coil out made a little bit of a difference because the fans have cycled on and off three times. But uh, now we're showing a little bit low, so that's kind of scary. We may need to add a little more to it. We're going to let this finish drying off, but if that's showing low when that coil's wet, it means we've got to add a little bit more for the winter charger. It's going to be low this winter. So I got the other gauges back out. Okay, so we're going to cool this thing down a little bit and see if that flashes off. Our, uh, you can see the movement in there. We're not getting crazy. We're just bringing that temperature down. Yep, see? So, as soon as winter would have rolled around, that would have been uh, too low. Kind of a generic old-fashioned trick in a way, but this is basically mimicking the outdoor temperature being low. You know, it's not a big deal if you live where it's warm and your winter's like 60 degrees. I mean, that's not what it is around here. We get down to negative temps, usually not super low, but somewhere in a negative 5, negative 10 is not unheard of. It's not very often, not all the time, but that's staying pretty, pretty consistent right there. So I'm going to say we're probably good to go. Go ahead and stop her. Basically, we added about another eight ounces, it looks like, so we're we're good. It's kind of cool as they had a shutoff back here. That made it a lot easier. As you can tell, this is a older one, just a little bit. So, I got a couple little randoms in here. I mean, what do you expect? I mean, it is kind of uh, two or three years old. So we can shut this fan down. I know that the suction side pressure is going to be really low, but I'm looking for large, large leaks. Like I said, they know the system's old. They don't want to put a lot of money into the thing. So that's something, as the new guys, uh, you get out there and stuff, not everything's cut and dry. Not everybody wants to replace everything. Not everybody has the money to replace everything. So you've got to make things work that, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of options. You just got to make it work majority of the leaks were all on the uh, high side. Got decent airflow through it. The inside coil is a little bit dirty, but you know, it is what it is. Where do you stop? Like I said, you could replace the oils, you could do all kinds of stuff. The compressor's getting old, the coils are old, things are starting to leak. Alright guys, like I said, the system's pretty old. They don't want to sink a crap load of money into it, so you got to cut me some slack there. You can only do so much for it. You got to make a judgment call on it because I mean if I was to do what I want to do I would be wanting to change oil I'd be wanting to do a little bit of everything to it um, you know but it just isn't feasible so uh, if you guys like the video and you enjoyed it and you want to see more like it please give it a thumbs up if you want to help support the channel I have links down below to all the tools that I use in the video so I appreciate all you guys tuning in and watching and subscribing don't forget to click the notification bell and until next time guys we'll catch you on the next one